Steve, a really warm welcome to you. Uh, Steve Van Dyke is uh, my friend and colleague who has my position in our uh, Canadian um, partnership. And you probably know that we have six partnerships around the globe. And the six partnerships cover the lion's share of the fundraising to support the three global programs. And normally on these calls, we go straight to the, the pointy end and go to the program uh, area. But this, this uh, night or this day, wherever you are, we're going to swap that around and we're going to uh, talk a little bit about uh, what happens in the national partnerships and what's going on there. So, Steve, welcome. And, and and you're talking from your own home in Toronto, is that right? Actually, no. I, I, Langham has an office. It's it's one room. Uh, it is in the building that's owned by SIM, SIM oh. Canada. Uh, yeah. And they have very generously uh, rented us a room at uh, a ridiculously low rent. Uh, so it's uh, that's where I am right now. Great. Okay. Now... Tell us, just put us in context before we talk about uh, your role with um, uh, Langham uh, Canada. I mean, how long have you been a Christian? When did all that sort of open up? Uh, well, just before I, I answer that, I just want to say I'm delighted to be part of this conversation right. and, and, and to see your faces and to be part of one of these, uh, uh, these Zoom prayer meetings. I've heard about them for, uh, for a long time. Okay, so when did I become a Christian? Uh, I um, uh, I became a Christian when I was uh, uh, 16, going on 17. Um, raised in a Christian home, uh, um, very rebellious against my uh, my upbringing. Um, fortunately, God preserved me from any any grievous life mistakes, um, but I. Um, I had no time for um, for the faith I grew up in, um, and had great plans for a, a, a life that did not include Christ. Um, but God broke through, um, and and it was it was like a C.S. Lewis moment. It was I was a reluctant convert, um, mm -hmm. but fortunately, uh, after I came to faith, um, I was introduced to a couple of men who became mentors for many many years and introduced me to great Christian voices. Uh, um, I didn't grow up in a church that was, that I would regard as affirming of someone that had questions. Um, and, and so I had to find a new church and a new, um, a, a new church environment that was actually going to um, shape me. And, and I, to this day, um, have have benefited from a couple of mentors I met within my first year or two of becoming a Christian. So. Wonderful. I, and, and, you know, at this point, then, the conversation could go in any number of directions, because I know right. you're a qualified accountant, you've been a missionary, um, you've been a Christian educator uh, and a pastor, and you're ordained. So we could follow any of those strands. But the one that I'd love to just focus on, obviously, for this call is... When did you come in and where did you come into contact with Langham? Right. Well, that actually picks up at a couple of threads you mentioned, John. I am a chartered accountant. Um, so mm -hmm. after working in Toronto for a, a, a few years, um, I, I returned to Africa. I'd been a, a, an associate missionary with SIM in Africa for a couple of years teaching in a mission school. My wife's parents were missionaries. She's actually she's English, uh, born in Zambia to British parents. Uh, and so we both returned to Africa, uh, to Zimbabwe, and then to Kenya. I became a partner in a, in a Christian chartered accountancy firm that was called Carr Stanier Sims. Some of you may recognize the name Carr. The founder was Graham Carr, who's the father-in-law of Mark Maynell, uh, the, um, the language director for preaching in, in Europe and Caribbean. So Mark Maynell's father-in-law was my boss, Graham Carr. Uh, and uh, so I worked in Nairobi for a, a number of years. And it was in a, a, a bookshop in Nairobi that I first, a Christian bookshop that I first discovered Chris Wright, just picking up a book that looked attractive. I'd never heard of the man before, uh, but it looked like an interesting book. And I picked it up and I realized I had never seen the Old Testament 
opened up to me the way that Chris Wright opened it up. Um, it was it was fantastic. So I started gobbling up his books. At the same time, uh, we had friends who um, uh, who lived in Nairobi at the time. Who he was a professor at at Negst, at Nairobi Evangelical Graduate School of Theology. So I was introduced to Negst into the phenomenon of theological education in Africa. Um, I had a number of clients who were because many of our clients, not all, were Christian organizations, and a number of them were involved in theological education. So through my professional work, I was introduced also to um, to theological education in Africa, and uh, over time became convinced that God um, wanted me to be involved in theological education myself. But that was when I was introduced to Langham, uh, because there were Langham scholars at Negst, and, uh, and I just heard about Langham. So um, when we came back to Canada, my wife and I started supporting Langham. Mm-hmm. And and uh, so we we did for many years, long before I ever knew that I was going to be involved in any way. Um, then, so what, when did that happen? And when when what was the trigger for actually um, jumping ship and coming on board? A, yeah. uh, well, I, I I actually left off. I I I left the profession I loved and and still love um, ten years ago. Um, I was pastoring a church as a tent maker in Toronto, and I ended up becoming a full-time pastor for a year while I finished off my theological education and then returned to Africa, to Congo. And I um, I taught at a seminary in Congo, and there I saw Langham in action, this organization we'd supported for many years. Mm-hmm. And suddenly, I mean, the principal of the seminary was the Langham Scholar. Um, we had Langham gift books that were given to the seminary every year. Uh, the 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 um, there was another Langham scholar on the staff as well. Um, so Langham suddenly was all around me teaching at this Shalom Seminary. For those of you who've heard of it in in Congo, uh, and so uh, I saw Langham in action. Around that time, uh, Langham Canada for the first time uh, was actually looking for an executive director. Um, it had existed at that point for about thirty years, but strictly as a volunteer run organization. Uh, so they, I, I applied and I was um, taken on as the executive director. So that was the very end of 2017. It's mm. incredible to think that it's more than six years now. So <laughs> that's how I got involved in Ligon. <laughs> so describe a little bit about what happens in terms of Langham Canada. What's what do you find yourself doing week to week, and um, what's the impact uh, in Canada in the church there? Well, um, I think for for, for starters, um, I mentioned before this call actually started, I mentioned to somebody that we have six time zones in this country. Um, That actually shapes a lot of Canadian life, including Langham life. Um, Canada, if you picture the map of Chile uh, running up and down north-south, up about half the coast of South America, Canada is comparable except east-west. Um, so about 90% of the Canadian population live within about 100 miles of the American border. We're all strung out in a, in a long line. It makes um, uh, running a national organization very difficult um, because you're not just operating in many time zones, but because you are, um, because travel is, is, is so important. Um, and and uh, we were first founded in Vancouver uh, on the Pacific coast. Um, that's because John Stott spent a lot of time teaching at Regent College. And, and so Regent College became kind of our base of operations for the first several decades, um, which is part of the reason why a big part of our our base uh, um, uh, is still in Vancouver. Um, but over time, it became obvious that, that Langham had to be more central geographically. And so the decision was made to migrate the office to Toronto, which is where where I am now. Uh, so, but uh, working as a Canadian Langham director means uh, engaging with with people who are literally coast to coast. Um, so I, um, I, I, at least twice a year, I travel to Western Canada, um, often to Manitoba and to Vancouver. Um, we have a growing base of support in the province of Alberta as well. Uh, and, and, um, it's much more difficult to get to the Atlantic provinces where Keith Todd is now, as you probably know, David. Um, 
but we have we have a base of support in the province of Newfoundland and Nova Scotia, less so in the province of New Brunswick. But um, so a lot of my time is 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 spent, if not traveling to meet people, at least engaging with them by letter, by phone, um, and, and and following up gifts, and also of course some um, approaching potential uh, new supporters. Um, we have a lot of churches that support us, and uh, that is one of my real focuses um, is because um, the, in my experience, the way to find people who are most engaged about global mission is to go through churches because they tend to migrate to church mission committees. Uh, and, and so um, that to me is really exciting. I get together with pastors a lot. Um, and and uh, um, just last week, actually, I met with uh, um, the uh, one of our new supporters. It's it's the one of the there are two very large Korean Presbyterian churches in Canada. One of them has supported us for a number of years, and when the other one found that out, they uh, they said, "Why haven't you? Why haven't we heard about you beforehand?" So they've now become supporters as well as of last week. We had a wonderful lunch with the pastor and the the head of the mission committee there. Um, that's that's a um, part of my work, at least, is meeting pastors, both existing supporters and potential new supporters. Uh, and yeah. great, and and you've been responsible for building the work across Canada there, and um, have also participating a lot in um, in the group of national executive teams that um, are running the funding side. Tell us a little bit your perspective on what it means to be part of that Langham executive team and um, where Canada fits in that. Uh, well, first of all, I mean, um, the the Langham team overall is, is a really impressive group to belong to. Um, it actually, I mean, I count it a privilege to be part of it. For one thing, because I mentioned that I was, uh, I, I just discovered Chris Wright through a Nairobi bookshop. Um, but I remember the first time I met him, he was speaking at People's Church in Toronto. Uh, and I took a book along for him to be, for him to autograph. And I just thought this is absolutely amazing that I'm actually speaking to Chris Wright in the flesh and I get him to autograph a book. Um, never in my wildest imagination thinking that I was one day going to sit around a, a, a board table with him and, and get to know him as an individual. Um, there were also other people, of course, like Riyad Cassis. I'd, I'd seen the name for many years because uh, he was involved in theological education, which I was I was so um, keen to follow. Again, never knowing that I was going to be working with him. Um, so it's a very impressive group uh, to belong to. Uh, Canada, of course, is uh, is uh, um, uh, we are a, a relatively small player uh, on the international scene, certainly compared to our American uh, friends and our our, our British uh, cousins. And and uh, it's, but it's 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 wonderful to be part of it. Uh, the uh, um, yeah, it's a privilege, like I say, to to uh, and also because you know, having spent ten years in Africa. Um, so much of my my burden as a Christian is for the majority world and specific, of course, mostly for Africa, because that's the region I know best. Um, so this is um, almost as good as being in Africa physically, uh, being involved in a ministry which is so engaged in the in the majority world. Um, and 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 so to to have so many, I, I mean, even, just getting to know the Langham scholars, for instance, um, the ones that are studying in Canada. We, we always have a, a string of Langham scholars going through Canada, but also the ones that are studying internationally. Um, I, I introduce, or rather, I interview many of them by Zoom. Um, recently, I, I interviewed one of our scholars who is based in Nigeria, and uh, just delightful. The, the next best thing to being in Nigeria and actually getting to know him um, and we've established a great um, rapport. We, we've communicated long since our, our interview is over, um, sharing articles and, 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 and uh, observations with each other and so on. Um, but it, we just thought that this would be an interesting conversation to people for people to eavesdrop on, because normally we go to the, the programme end 
and talk to folk around the world that are engaged in the program. But we thought we'd just share a little bit about the um, uh, the global partnerships that underpin that. And as you rightly point out, they build relationships direct with program as well. That's uh, absolutely. Um, this is how I can I I, I can um, communicate best uh, to our supporters in Canada what Langham is by this is by understanding um, at a deep level what what Langham is doing um, and and engaging with with our, our our program leaders and other people who are involved in Langham. Um, the the, I I don't feel like I'm I'm kind of hived off in a in a fundraising corner. I think for me that's the important thing, um, mm-hmm. is that um, I I I I feel like fundraising is integral to to what Langham does. In fact, uh, I had kind of a um, um, a breakthrough moment about that when we were when we went with SIM when we were in Congo, uh, mm-hmm. and and. Uh, there were challenges along the way raising our personal support um and and um uh to the point where at one point i was ready to give up uh and then i was introduced to actually a book called the spirituality of fundraising um and and uh some of you may have seen that book and it it revolutionized my perspective on on the on fundraising role within within global ministry uh and and it really it really helped me to understand at a deep level that that um, what I'm doing is an integral part of what God is doing. Um, it is not just an um, an unfortunate aspect that we bolt onto God's work. It is integral to God's work. Um, I, I think because... you're even telling us that um, you think chartered accountants can be Christians as well. Somewhere in that, is that true? That's, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I I do know. I... I mean, he was speaking tongue in cheek, but it's a guy I went to university with who went directly into pastorate. Um, and he told me at one point he doesn't understand how a Christian could be a chartered accountant <laughs> because they were they were uh, sort of involved in in trying to uh, uh, deny the uh, Canada Revenue Agency of, of the resources they need. We were kind of playing a, a game and it was all kind of immoral, but he was laughing. No, <laughs> chartered accountants can be, can, can, can be definitely. And, and what's more, it's interesting because, I, of course, I'm a member of the Canadian Institute. Uh, being uh, being involved in full time ministry, the Canadian Institute has given me a 100 percent exemption from my professional dues every year, which otherwise run to about fifteen hundred dollars a year. Um, wow. So even they recognize the importance of chartered accountants in 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 ministry. So. Um, no, well, it's, we it's, certainly it's, do as well, Steve. Yes, it's uh, it's good to have someone that can count. You know, it's. Uh, yeah. um, but Steve, you've kind of given us some prayer topics, which I'm going to ask you just to expand a little bit on before we go into groups. But before we do that, just um, we didn't say anything about your your personal um, family situation, married to Margaret, and recently a, a very new grandfather as well, or for. The, I can't remember the number of times, but I know that um, Margaret has not felt that well at one point, even today. So it's great that you're with us, and it's great to hear that she's okay. But we'll yeah, pray for her. But tell us a bit more about the family. Just uh... yeah, um, we have well, we have two children. So mm-hmm. our our daughter um, Elizabeth is is married and living in Ottawa. Her um uh, her husband is. Um, He's an engineer and a lawyer, and he is a major in the Canadian Armed Forces. So he is um, the the director of some legal branch within the Canadian military. Uh, and uh, she works at the Ottawa Hospital in the planning department as a hospital administrator of some description. And they have now had their second child. They had, they had a daughter in 2021 uh, named Annika. And uh, Dutch name because her my son-in-law is actually an Afrikaner from South Africa who migrated to Canada in his youth, um, and uh, so and Annika is being raised as a bilingual girl speaking Afrikaans to her father and English to her mother, um, and and uh, now they about a month ago they had their second daughter who's named Isabella. Uh, and in the midst of all of that, we found that my son is an engineer who also lives in Ottawa with his wife, uh, Alex, 
and we just found out that they are expecting their first child. So that that little girl will be arriving in September. So we've wow. gone from zero to three granddaughters in a little bit more than two years. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Um, you you reflected kindly on sort of the life of Langham, Canada and whatever, and then tried to pull some prayer strands um, um, to us. Now, people don't need to write these down. They'll be in the chat box. In fact, they are in the chat box, I think. Uh, um, and... Um, so people will have access to that in in the the prayer groups when we go there um but just point out some of the priorities that you wanted us to to pray through sure um i think right now for us as a board um our single highest priority is is uh finding someone that can help to carry the load uh in in specifically in the western provinces british columbia and alberta particularly um, large um, mission-minded communities in each province, uh, and um, and so we are looking for someone who can represent us, not full-time, but someone who can be a part-time representative, say, uh, a presence at mission conferences, someone that can go and uh, and meet with, with pastors or uh, prospective foundation supporters. Um, hard role to fill because you... you, you well, you you have to find the right person, um, mm. and so we um we are fortunate. We have several people who are um, very familiar or know their way around Regent College in Vancouver. One of the the, the existing principal uh, of if Regent is a former uh, board member of Langham, and so uh, we have a couple of people who are looking out for us uh, in Vancouver to find the right person. But um, we've. We've talked to several different people who, for good reasons, it didn't work out. We're still looking for the right person because it is increasingly a a, um, a real load um, trying to cover Ontario and the Western provinces at the same time. Uh, so that's probably our, 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 our number one um, okay. prayer issue right now as a, as a board. 